In this video, we'll go over 20 true or false statements based around the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. There will be three stages to the difficulty. The first five questions will be easy. The next ten will be a medium difficulty. And then the last five questions will be hard. Then there'll be a grading scale at the end of the video to see how well you did. Now, let's get started. The final raid in Wrath of the Lich King was Ice Crown Citadel, or more commonly known as ICC. Crap. The final raid was actually the Ruby Sanctum, which was a one-boss mini-raid released a few months after ICC, as kind of a holdover until the next expansion came out. Not very many people remember it because it wasn't very memorable. Wrath was the first expansion which needed a specific type of flying training in order to fly in Northrend. Fact. You needed cold weather flying training in order to fly in Northrend, which cost 1000 gold and need to be above level 77 to learn it. Since the Burning Crusade introduced flying mounts, they didn't have a special flying training in order to fly in Outlands. Frostmourne was a rare droppable weapon for a while. Crap. Frostmourne has never been added to the game for players to use. Although, there is a Frostmourne item in the game files that is inaccessible to players, so it seems like Blizzard was bouncing around the idea of letting players get Frostmourne at one point in time. The first raid in Wrath of the Lich King was also the final raid of Vanilla WoW. Fact. The first raid in Wrath of the Lich King was Naxxramas which was a retooled, nerfed version of the Vanilla WoW raid. In Wrath of the Lich King, Death Knights could tank in all three talent trees. Fact: All three talent trees had talents specifically designed for tanking, and allowed for three different types of tank specs, or three different kinds of DPS specs, which really just led to some Death Knights to pick some of the more tanky talents in order to give them an edge in PvP and it was difficult to balance, so they just moved the tanking to the most popular tanking build of Blood Death Knights, and converted the other two into pure DPS specs. Alright, and now into the medium level questions. These ones will be a little bit more difficult than the first five. In Wrath, they added the first ever mobs which could drop mounts out in the open world. Fact. Before Wrath, there wasn't mounts you could farm out in the open world as all of them were tied to quest chains, vendors, raids, slash dungeon bosses, or reputations. One of the more famous open world mount drops was the Time Lost Proto Drake. Because of the undead theme of the expansion, Wrath had a few undead whale world bosses. Crap. There were no whale world bosses at all, let alone undead ones. There was concept art though for Undead Whales that they might have planned to release in Wrath of Lich King that never happened. In addition to tanking and DPS, Death Knights could also be healers. Crap. Death Knights couldn't heal humanoids, but their Death Coil ability did work on Undeads in order to heal them. And they also had a talent which could temporarily turn them into an Undead for 10 seconds which then allowed them to heal themselves with Death Coil. With the long quest chain required to create Shadowmorn, Wrath of the Lich King was the first expansion to have legendary weapons. Crap. Legendary weapons have existed since Vanilla WoW. In Wrath, a player was accidentally mailed a GM item, which allowed them to instantly kill current content raid bosses. Fact. A player was accidentally given the shirt to Martin's Fury, which allowed them to kill everything within 30 yards instantly, and the player and his whole guild got bans for using the item. Wrath is when the famous Dance Studio was added to the game. Crap. This is one of the promised features with some of the promotional material that never made it into the game and has become a long-running joke within the game. Wrath was the first expansion in which hunters did not need to use ammo nor mana to use their hunter abilities. Crap. Wrath was the last expansion in which you needed those two things, as ammo was removed in Cataclysm along with mana and replaced with the new focus system that hunters have today. 
Wrath was the first expansion to have raids with multiple levels of difficulties. Fact, with the raid Trial of the Crusader, Blizzard introduced normal and heroic modes, and Wrath was also when 10 and 25-man versions of raids were introduced. Before Wrath, all raids had one difficulty and one set number of players that the raid was tuned around. Wrath was the only expansion to advertise something on its game box, which did not get added to the game. Fact, Wrath of the Lich King promised aerial PvP combat, which never made it into the game. Despite the fact that there's a picture of it on the Wrath of the Lich King box, as well as advertisements for it. This is different from something like the Dance Studio, which was promised through videos and other promotional materials. Those things get dropped all the time during development. Rarely do they drop something which makes it to the box art. Wrath was the expansion to introduce badge gear, which could be obtained from dungeon and raid boss kills, and turned into a vendor to buy a piece of raid gear. Crap, Badge Gear was introduced with the Burning Crusade. Wrath just improved upon the system and gave it better things to buy with it. And that's the end of the medium questions. The next five questions will now be the hard ones. Season 8, the last PvP season in Wrath of the Lich King, was the longest PvP season in the game's history. Crap, Season 8 was the second longest PvP season clocking in at 37 weeks, as it started with patch 3.3.2, and didn't end until Cataclysm came out. So it lasted the entirety of the content drought for the last patch of Wrath, until Cataclysm. In Cataclysm though, Season 11 lasted for 38 weeks, as it was the PvP season stretching out the content drought from that last patch to the next expansion, making the Cataclysm content drought one week longer for the PvP season. Old War was the first ever raid to have hard mode versions of normal boss fights. Crap, the first hard modes were introduced with AQ40 and the Bug Trio, as you could get better pieces of gear depending on which order you fought the three bugs, technically making them the first hard mode trigger in the game. The NPC standing next to Ronin and Dalaran was Verisa Windrunner, Sylvanas' little sister. Fact, Verisa and Ronin were married, before Garrosh killed Ronin in the bombing of Theramor. The Eye of Eternity one boss raid was the raid in between Trial of the Crusader and Ice Crown Citadel, making it the seventh raid added in Wrath. Crap, the revamp of Onyxia's Lair was the one boss raid added in between TOC and ICC, which was technically the seventh raid added if you count VOA as a raid. Otherwise, it's the sixth. And finally, for the last hardest question, the final dungeon boss of Wrath of the Lich King was Arthas, the Lich King. Fact. This one is kind of a double fake out. The final dungeon added to the game was Halls of Reflection, as it was the third dungeon of the three added with the ICC patch. And the final boss in Halls of Reflection was the escape from Arthas, technically making Arthas the final dungeon boss. I was also trying to get people to double guess themselves by saying dungeon instead of raid, making people believe it was a trick question, which hopefully didn't trick too many people. Now into the grading scale. I'll have it up on screen. If you got 18 to 20 questions correct, you are a Wrath of the Lich King expert. If you got less than 12 correct, then you get an F. Anyways, I hope you like the addition of difficulty levels to this. And if you have any ideas for other fact or crap videos, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as what your score was, and in particular, which questions you might have got wrong.